everyone today we are going to start the second chapter of chemistry that is is matter around us pure right you have already learned about matter in the first chapter now we are going to read it further in this chapter now in this chapter uh, much of the syllabus has been deleted for this year right so whatever limited portion will be coming now i'll be taking your class based on that we will not do the whole chapter right so starting with this matter you have already read right and you learned also that matter exists in three forms solid liquid gas it is made up of small small particles called atoms now in this chapter we will read that matter it has been uh, classified into two forms pure substance and impure substance now talking about pure substance in chemistry the definition for pure is totally different you uh, see the things around you then uh, if uh, like you can say that this is pure milk or on the cartons also it is written like pure ghee or if for anything it is written pure pure milk if we say in terms of chemistry is it is not pure because it has so many other uh, substances also mixed in it right in chemistry if we talk pure means which is made up of single type of elements a uh, single type of atoms in milk in even in pure milk you have the fat also uh, water is also there proteins are also there right similarly when we talk about ghee in ghee also there are so many other substances although it is pure but pure here means which is made up of single kind of element uh, atoms right so pure substance then further it can be classified into elements and compounds right now what are elements elements they are the basic form of matter that cannot be broken down into simpler substances because they are made up of or they consist of one kind of atoms only the whole element is made up of one kind of element uh, atoms like if we talk about suppose we say sodium whatever sodium element whatever grams we take on it we'll see that they are all made up of one kind of atoms only there will be no mixing in that right sodium is there aluminum zinc whatever example we take they are all these elements will be made up of the same kind of atoms and they cannot be further broken down right so such substances they are known as elements and what are compounds they can be broken down into simpler substances by chemical reactions or by the electrochemical reactions they are made up of two or more elements right they are made up of two or more elements chemically combined in a fixed ratio they are always present in a fixed ratio like if we take the example now they are made up of two or more elements like if we take the example of water that is h2o now you all know h2o means it is made up of h and o hydrogen and oxygen hydrogen is one element oxygen is other element but it is it here to form a compound 
it will always be combining in a fixed ratio like it will be two parts of hydrogen and one part of oxygen they are chemically combined together they form a bond to form a compound and the new substance formed has totally different properties you know hydrogen is a gas oxygen is also a gas but when they combine together they form water molecule which will be a liquid so they to form totally different properties right now this can be separated only by chemical reactions or electrochemical reactions like you know water when uh, uh, undergoes electrolysis process then it forms hydrogen and oxygen otherwise you cannot separate water into hydrogen or oxygen so this is the difference between elements and compounds elements cannot be further broken down why compounds because they are made up of two or more kinds of elements they can be broken down but only by some chemical or electrochemical reactions right and the new compound which will be formed from the from the combination of these elements that will have totally different properties from the constituent elements from which it was made then next we come to the other classification of matter that is impure substance impure substance means when there is a mixture a mixing of uh, two or more than two substances so mixtures they are impure elements or compounds they mix together in any ratio to form a mixture it is not necessary that it will be in a fixed ratio only like for example we take salt solution or we take the example of sugar solution you can mix any quantity of salt in water or you can mix any quantity of sugar in water or we take a mixture of iron fillings iron is written as fe plus we mix sulfur in this now iron fillings means iron ka chura right that will be in black color sulfur is a yellow color powder when we mix these two we can mix it in any quantity right when we mix this it will form a mixture the constituents can be separated by physical methods only like salt solution now if we want to get salt back from water what we do we evaporate the water from it we start heating it and all the water when it will evaporate salt will be left behind so evaporation is known as a physical process similarly if we take this mixture iron fillings and sulfur now what we can do know you know that iron is magnetic in nature right it it gets attracted towards magnet if we roll a magnet over it what will happen all the iron fillings they will get attracted towards the magnet right they will stick to that magnet and we can separate it out sulfur powder will be left behind but if we heat these two together then they form a black color solid mass that is they form a compound which is known as iron sulfide fes and we cannot separate these two right so the, this will have totally different properties here magnet will not work now because this iron now it will not show magnetic property so here it shows the properties of the constituent substances like here we have mixed iron iron will show its property sulfur will show its property right so this these are the differences between elements compounds and mixtures elements they are made up of one kind of atom only 
compounds they are made by the combination of two or more elements mixtures when the elements are compound they mix together in any ratio in compound it is always a fixed ratio like i gave you the example of water you can even take the example of carbon dioxide it is always co2 if we just write co this becomes totally different compound that is carbon monoxide this is carbon dioxide right so it is always found in a fixed ratio here no fixed ratio is there here the elements do not show the properties of their constituent elements while here they show the properties of the constituent substances now these mixtures again they can be of two types yes one thing more i forgot to tell you these elements they are further classified as metals non metals and metalloids right the elements are further of three types right metals non metals and metalloids now you have read about these in your uh, junior classes also metals they are those substances which have luster that is shining in them right they are very hard cannot be broken easily they have a uh, high malleability ductility high melting point boiling point right all these are the properties of metals like for example we have zinc we have iron we have aluminium all these are metals while non metals are those substances which do not have any luster just the opposite of metals they have low melting and boiling points right they are poor conductors of heat and electricity while metals are good conductors of heat and electricity they are non metals they are non malleable non ductile so all these and all the gases like oxygen hydrogen then uh, uh, nitrogen or if we talk about the other non metals like chlorine bromine carbon sulfur all these are they are in the powder form so they are non metals because they are brittle they are not hard they can be broken down on hammering then metalloids are those substances which show some properties of metals and some properties of non metals so they are at the border line they are at the border line of metals and non metals they have some properties of metals and some of non metals for example boron germanium right then silicon all these are non uh, sorry they are metalloids right now talking about mixtures mixtures are also again classified into two types they can be either homogeneous or heterogeneous right so mixtures can be homogeneous or heterogeneous homogeneous homo means same right so those mixtures which have a uniform composition throughout they are known as homogeneous for example like salt solution or sugar solution these are homogeneous in nature because when you see these you see it same throughout right sugar solution you see salt solution you see they have the same composition throughout mostly they are 
transparent. They are transparent. Why heterogeneous? Now this word hetero means different. So which have non-uniform composition. Right? Like if you uh, just now we took the example of um, iron fillings and sulfur powder or you take the example of um, um, oil and water right or you take the example of soil and water Now, when you mix oil and water or soil and water together, you do not get a uniform composition. Oil forms a separate layer on top. Right? And in case of soil and water, soil will settle down at the bottom, water will remain up. And mostly, they are not transparent, but they are opaque. You cannot see through them. Right? So, these are the Heterogeneous mixtures. So mixtures, either they can be homogeneous or heterogeneous. Hom or homogeneous mixtures, they have uniform composition throughout. They are same throughout. And mostly they are transparent. While heterogeneous mixtures, they have a non-uniform composition. Then they are mostly opaque. Examples. You can find out more examples also for this. Then further if we do, then this homogeneous and heterogeneous mixtures are also further classified. Homogeneous mixtures, mostly they are known as true solutions. And heterogeneous mixtures, they are either colloids or suspensions. So this colloid and suspensions, this I'll take up in the next video. Till then, you revise this. These are the basic things which you should know. Right? So till we meet again, keep studying and do not forget to subscribe my channel. Thank you.